Do you want to be able to access the full range of your dynamics? Do you want your low and your high notes to pop out every single time without any overblows or underblows? Well, knowing how to approach these techniques is the foundation of good tone, and it's all about mastering your air. <laughs> But what is air control? Well, air control is the ability to master your airflow as it goes towards the saxophone, and it's done by using different internal mechanisms inside the body. Understanding what each mechanism does and how to control it gives you the ability to master your air control. In this video, we're gonna be looking at how to properly blow into your sax, how to activate and control your throat, and understanding the balance between air force and air speed to combine them and get great control of your dynamics, as well as overblows and underblows. Oh, I just wanna jump in quick. It's Nigel here from Sax School. I hope you're enjoying this lesson with Chris. He's one of our star tutors inside Sax School. And this lesson here today is just a section from the full lesson on breathing and sound and mastering your air that's available to our members inside Sax School, where we help thousands of learners just like you. If you're curious to know more though, I'll pop a link in the description down below. We can grab our 14 day free trial so you can go in and try it out for yourself and see how it can help you too. Right, let's get back to the lesson. I'm also gonna be using a few different terms. The first term is air force, and we can think about force as how hard or soft we're playing. If you increase the force of the air, you push the air harder, and so you play louder. You can try this away from a sax by trying to hold a whisper and then increase the whisper in dynamic. The second term is speed, and this is simply how fast the air is moving. It's controlled using a different set of internal mechanisms to force, and we'll talk more about that later. The third term I'm going to be using is energy, and this is the combination of your air force and your air speed, and it refers to how the air is being manipulated overall. A high force and a high speed will result in high energy, and a low force and a low speed will result in low energy, and there's a huge scale in between that you can access as well. <laughs> So when we blow into a saxophone, there's a checklist of things that we wanna go through. The first is engaging the diaphragm, and the diaphragm is a dome-shaped structure that interacts with your lungs when you breathe. It's tricky to explain the feeling of engaging your diaphragm, but the best way that I've found to describe it is to tense your abdominal muscles, and then try and push out from the center of your body between your belly button and the bottom of your sternum. It's the same kind of feeling you get when you tense up as if you're about to be tickled. When you feel that tension, it's allowing you to push air from your lungs up towards the sax with more air force. The next step is how we actually blow into the saxophone itself. And this is a really common trap that beginners fall into because they tend to blow into the sax as if they were blowing out a candle. There are a couple of reasons why this isn't a good idea. The first is that the point at which the air begins to accelerate is towards the front of your mouth. And that means that we can't use any of the internal mechanisms that we want to use to control the airspeed, such as your throat and the back of your tongue. Secondly, it makes your cheeks bulge outwards. And while at higher levels, this is something that you can control while maintaining good tone, for now, it's just gonna introduce instability into your air and it could make your intonation flat as well. So it's best to avoid. So how do we blow into the sax correctly? The best way I've found to describe this technique is to imagine that you have a cold mirror in front of you. If you blow as if you're blowing out a candle, then it's gonna be cold air onto the cold mirror and nothing happens. Instead, if you blow hot air from the back of your throat, the mirror will mist up. That's the technique we wanna use. You can actually check these two methods by holding up your hand in front of your face and you can blow in the two different ways and feel the temperature change across your hand to check which method you're using. Remember, when we're blowing into the sacs, we wanna keep our cheeks from bulging out by keeping the corners of our mouth pinched in almost like an ooh shape. We have loads of awesome lessons about embouchure inside Sax School, and they talk about this in much more detail. So make sure to click the link below to sign up for a 14 day free trial. <laughs> The next step is to learn how to activate and control your throat. But why is it important to use your throat at all? Well, your throat is a cylinder, and as you blow air, the air passes through that cylinder. We can change the size of the cylinder to affect how the air passes through it. Imagine you have a tube with a hole that's around the size of your head. If you blow air into that tube, the air is gonna go forwards at a normal rate. If you then shrink the tube to the size of a straw and blow the air through that straw, the air is gonna shoot out of the other end at a much faster speed. So contracting the cylinder down increases the speed and expanding the cylinder 
decreases the speed. On the saxophone, when we want to play a higher note, we need to get the reed to vibrate faster. This is because higher frequencies, or higher pitch notes, vibrate at faster rates, so we need to accelerate the air. The reverse is also true. If you want to play a low note, we need the reed to vibrate more slowly, so we need to decelerate the air. You might be asking, well why do we have tone holes on the saxophone if it's all about accelerating the speed of the air? The tone holes are obviously very important, but you can still play out of tune when you're playing a note. So the tone holes act as a foundation for a good note, and then we use internal mechanisms to fine tune the pitch of the note. As saxophone players, we're actually pretty fortunate to have an octave key to shift us up into the upper octave. Other instruments like the flute don't have an octave key, and so they require an increase in the airspeed to get into the higher register. So, how do we cause our throat to expand or contract? Well, there are a few different techniques you can use. The first is by utilizing different vowel shapes. So the vowel shape OR really opens the throat, and the vowel shape E really closes the throat. There are loads of other shapes that you can use in between, and for me, I generally use them in the order OR, R, I, A, E. E is the most open, OR is the most closed off. Another technique you can use in relation to this is raising and lowering the back of your tongue. Now this doesn't actually change your throat itself, but for some people it can happen as a byproduct of your throat changing, whereas for other people you need to lift the back of your tongue as a separate action. By raising the back of your tongue towards the roof of your mouth, you can make the chamber inside your mouth more narrow, which increases the airspeed. To practice this, try putting the tip of your tongue on your lower front teeth. Then move through the vowel sounds and feel how the back of your tongue raises up and down. If you're really struggling to do this, try and mimic the hiss of a cat, because that can really get that tongue to move upwards. It's also really important and useful to practice this stuff on a mouthpiece, because that ensures that your tongue is positioned correctly to articulate as you would as if you were playing. The third technique, and in my opinion the most important technique, is called pitching. Some people call it pitching, some people call it voicing. If you hear either of those things, they refer to the same thing. Pitching a note is when we imagine what the note is going to sound like inside our head before we play the note, and we can make this easier by actually singing the note as well. Going through the following process in both directions will help you develop your pitching skill. First of all, sing a note out loud and try and feel the shape of your throat as you do. Then, stop singing and try and hear that note inside your head. Whilst doing this, try and keep the shape that your throat was in when you were singing. Ah. Uh... Next, reverse the process. Try to imagine the note you're going to sing inside your head, feel the shape of your throat, and then produce the pitch of the note out loud. Ah. Uh... <laughs> So we've talked about how to blow into the sax, and we've talked about how to engage our throat and our tongue to help control the airspeed, so what's next? To understand how we get the most out of this control in any situation, we need to go back to the basics. How do we play a note? When you watch somebody play the saxophone for the first time ever, you often hear them getting this kind of sound. The reason this happens is because we say the phrase, blow into the sax, and so they generate force pushing the air forwards towards the saxophone, and at some point the note will engage. So we have high air force because we're pushing the note quite hard, but we have low air speed because we're not using our throat to help engage the note. So the overall energy of the note is very middling, and that's why it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort to get the note to engage at all. And I'm using this word engage, which is basically just saying the moment at which the tone of the note begins. So now watch what happens when I keep the force of my air the same, but I contract my throat to accelerate the speed of the air. Remember, the processes we can use to contract the throat are pitching and vowel shapes. You can hear as I'm tightening my throat that the note is getting closer to the point where it's going to engage, and then when the airspeed is just right, the note kicks in. So here we have a medium amount of force and a medium amount of airspeed, and that combines to produce a good amount of energy overall, enough to get the note to start. I like to think of this process as being very similar to the bite point on a clutch in a car. You're increasing the revs of the engine and gradually releasing the clutch, and then the moment where it's just right, the clutch engages and the car begins to accelerate and move forward. Every note on the saxophone has a bite point just like this, and this is where mastering your air control allows you to get the full range of your playing. <laughs> 
So how can we use this to do things like avoid overblows or underblows? An overblow can happen for a few different reasons, but the most common reason is that the airspeed is too fast for the note to engage at its normal pitch. If the airspeed is too fast, that means our throat is too tight and it's accelerating the air faster than it should be. In order to fix this, we need to think about pitching low and using open vowel sounds. Try this on a low E. If you think about pitching a high note while you're playing low E, then low E won't pop out, but octave E will. So this is what it sounds like for low E on alto. And this is what it sounds like for low E on tenor. The reverse is also true. If you try and play palm key D while pitching a low note or using an open vowel sound, you're gonna get this. Whereas if you pitch high, in this instance, the force of the air remains the same, but by increasing the air speed, we increase the overall energy of the sound, and that produces a drastically different result. One thing that's really important to be aware of is that sometimes when you increase the force of the air, you can actually cause your throat to expand as a result of that. By doing that, you may accidentally cause your air speed to be slower. So if you try and play a palm key note really loudly, Often the airspeed will be too slow to get the note to engage and the note will fail. So when you go for a high note, try to make sure you don't blast too hard. It's also important to know that other things can cause overblows. Things like too tight with your embouchure, using a little bit too much mouthpiece or a leak in your saxophone. So keep an eye on these aspects as well. As well as using this knowledge to control overblows and underblows, you can use this to get a much greater level of control on your dynamic range. Changes in your dynamics come from an increase or a decrease in the force of your air. Blowing harder will cause you to play louder, blowing softer will cause you to play quieter. Most people can play the sax loudly because you just need to increase the force of the air to get it to play louder. And more air force means we're safely past the point where the note will engage. But if the note has a bite point, the point at which the notes will engage, surely lowering the force too much will cause the note to fail. Well, remember, high force and high speed equals high energy, low force and low speed equals low energy, but we have a huge range in between we can work with. So if we wanna play a note more quietly, as we reduce the force of the air, we need to counterbalance this by bringing up the speed of the air. That way we prevent the overall energy of the air from dropping below the bite point. Let me show you two demonstrations. In the first demonstration, I'm gonna start by playing a note loudly and then reduce the force of the air down, but not increase the air speed by tightening my throat. Notice that we reach the point where the note stops engaging and suddenly the tone just drops. On top of that, the intonation becomes very flat as well. Now watch what happens as I keep decreasing the force of my air, but I tighten my throat to increase the air speed. I'm able to access so much more of my quiet dynamic by doing this, and that basically doubles my expression to massively improve my playing ability. So hopefully you've learned a whole bunch about how your air supply works and how to control it. And if you're a member of Sax School Pro, you can go to the website and watch this video in its entirety, where we run through a whole bunch of exercises to really maximize everything that we've learned. Keep practicing hard, and I'll catch you on the next one.